Uh, hey, uh, this is Green Machine Comics. Sorry, I was kind of startled right now. Hey, we got people walking by the store. Hello. Um, so we're going to do our weekly comic wrap-up. We have a new mic, a Blue Yeti in play. We have no idea if the sound's going to be good enough. I mean, it's a Blue Yeti, but uh, this is our first time doing this sort of recording thing. And we're going to put this out on YouTube and then share this, um, not just with YouTube, but Facebook and Instagram. And, and hopefully it's just less of a headache for us going live on each each one so we're doing our weekly comic wrap-up we're gonna go over everything marvel dc and otherwise uh image idw all that good fun um and it was a really interesting week for comics last week was slow i i don't know what the deal was maybe people don't want to put stuff out on, on halloween or something but this week was was full. Like I have a full blown novel of comics, a giant amount to go over. So let's just get started. Um, the first book I read this week was Immortal Hulk, and this comes on the heel. Oh, I probably should say our spoiler warning. So spoiler, we do cover stuff that happened last month or last issue if it's a biweekly. Um, so if you haven't caught up on this stuff and you don't want to see something, like you don't want to know about the last Immortal Hulk, don't watch this. Um, or shut it off when we get to that point. So, okay, from here on out. So, uh, you can tell by the cover that in the last Immortal Hulk, uh, the Hulk got beat and he got cut up and put into a whole bunch of jars separate. And uh, this is a, a rather frightening instance for the Hulk. The Hulk's had a really weird run so far. Um, it's been weird. He's been possessed by, I guess, his father? Uh, Bruce, Bruce Banner's father is what it was. Um, and so now he's kind of the Devil Hulk, and he's really wild, and Banner was dead. And if you know anything about the Hulk, when, when Banner is dead, that's when he's at his, like, most powerful. And, well, this one wraps up quite a few stuff. It's really good. It was a really, really good issue, and I love the art of Immortal Hulk these days. So, uh, this one's kind of a must-read. I would say this is a must-read for people that aren't even really into Marvel. Like, this is, this is a good jumping-off point. Uh, let's, next is Deathstroke Arkham, and I fully confess I have not been following this Deathstroke, uh, storyline. It seems as though Slade is in Arkham and being counseled and then dealing with, uh, stuff he's seeing and what's real and what's not, and without spoiling much more, like, I, I can't say much more beyond that. Uh, it, it was a pretty good issue. I, I kind of think that unless you're really a big dog... Uh, Deathstroke fan, you're probably not going to read this book. You're not going to be too into this book. And this isn't a very good jumping off point if you want to get into Deathstroke. I was a little confused. Uh, but the art was great. The art was great. And the story was actually pretty good. I just wouldn't recommend it if you're, you're jumping in from here. Maybe another issue. Next, we had a book I was really, really happy to see. Really, really happy to review. Uh, that's Dead Rabbit. Now, the first Dead Rabbit was basically following a guy who was sort of like Robin Hood. Yeah. I, think, I think that's a nice way of putting it. Uh, he's kind of, he, well, not kind of, he's an anti-hero. Yeah. Um, he is a lot like the Punisher where he will right some wrongs. I, I kind of, the way I saw his first book was he put on brass knuckles and it was almost like he was the Punisher with brass knuckles. And it was a really good opening. Um, he also robs banks and steals and, and does that, but he doesn't do it to where it hurts the little guy. He just basically goes after corporations. And in this, he's sort of put in a tight spot and has to get some money quick and revert back to his old self and doing things uh, the way he used to. The problem with it all is the mafia is sort of breathing down his neck because they think he stole a bunch of money on his last big score. So that's, I mean... It's not a really deep storyline, but these are super action-filled. So if you're a big fan of action films, or you liked, like, 80s, I don't know, 80s movies like Hard Boiled or any Arnold Schwarzenegger type stuff or, or Bruce Willis type stuff, you would be totally at home with Dead Rabbit. I had a great time with it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, a lot of veteran buddies would probably love this book, too. You, you... Uh, dude, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Still... Yogi fully agrees. It's got Yogi's seal of approval. Um... Next, we had Marvel Knights. I 100% confess this is the first time I've read a Marvel Knights book. I, I had never read them before this. I, I, I don't know why. Um, this follows Daredevil. He's kind of lost his memory, wakes up in a cemetery. It's, well, it's sort of creepy. 
the Punisher is there. Bruce Banner is there. There's no explanation as to why they're there or why they've lost their memories. And something gets revealed later on. Uh, there's villains tied to this universe that I think have equally lost their memory. Or I know they've equally lost their memory. Not much is explained. It's a big mystery, but they do reveal who the big bad is in this. So it was a pretty pretty darn good read. I had a good time with it. And the art is really, really beautiful. So a as a DC fanboy, because I'm a DC fanboy first, I had a good time with this book. So I, I will say that Marvel fans should pick this up. And even if you're on the fence for DC and Marvel, you probably have a really good time with this book. Let's see. Next we have another book I was really excited to see, and that's Blackbird. Now... Uh, I maybe I like it for the wrong reasons. I don't know. Uh, the art is really, really beautiful, and the magic system that they're using looks like Vegas neon lights. Yeah, a couple of them are like neon colors. Yeah, and it totally reminds me of like Lantern Corps stuff. So I really, really like the art in this book, and and it just the whole way through, it's really, really it, it, it's it's good art. The storyline is basically a girl. Um, when she was younger, she saw something she couldn't explain when there was a big earthquake in California. Uh, she, it was like a giant wolf creature, kind of. And my phone's going off. <laughs> that totally rattled me. Um, and uh, she didn't have an explanation for it, but she knows she, she, she thought she saw magic. She always talks about wizards, and she talks about like a game that she played called Paragons. And she discovers that all that stuff is kind of real. And she even winds up, well, I, I can't spoil more than that. But she's sort of infiltrating this group. And, and this is the book she did it. And it's the second book. This is a Sam Humphreys, Jen Bartell uh, book. The art is beautiful. And it's not too late to jump in on this. The second book, you wouldn't be too lost. Just all you need to know is that her sister's been kidnapped. And she's trying to, to find them by infiltrating the magic groups. And that's about it. I won't spoil any more for that. That's totally worth picking up. Uh, keep in mind, though, uh, image these days just really sinks to me. So, you can take it with a grain of salt. I'm very biased towards Image and DC these days. Um, next, I read Adventures of Super Sons. Had a great time with this book. Oh, my God. Um, where to begin? So, the last one ended with uh, the Super Sons have sort of been kidnapped by space aliens, I guess. Kidnapped, lured. I don't know. So, space aliens that romanticized the villains of the DC Earth. And so basically all these aliens have changed themselves to look like kid versions of the villains of the D of DC Earth. What's going on with their camera? Is it good? Okay. <laughs> um, so there's like a kid Lex Luthor and he's talking about how he's better than Lex Luthor and he's going to rule the world and he's going to He's going to take the real Lex Luthor as his sidekick. And it was, it was a really entertaining take. On top of that, uh, Jonathan Kent's been split into red and blue halves, which uh, both, I mean, it's cool in the storyline, but it also kind of frightens me because I was not a big fan of the red and blue Superman. But uh, Dam Damian Wayne is just so well written in this series. Like, if he's, if he's not, you know, criticizing something or figuring something out, he's busting Jonathan's balls. Yeah. Like Batman with a bigger chip on his shoulder than ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and he's, he's always saying something snide. It's, it's so good. Like, I like it. Uh, and and he even when Jonathan Kent is, like, struggling in this story, like, he's still saying snide things to him. Like, God, you just can't, you just can't stop. You're just a, a good influence on your own self. <laughs> like, yeah. So uh, it's written really well. Really well. Um, next is Infinity Wars, and I think you, you guys kind of gathered from our last video, at least the f people who saw it on Facebook and Instagram, uh, I, I think I have Infinity Wars, uh, fatigue, fatigue. yeah, fatigue, that, that's the nice way to put it, um, uh, some of the Infinity Warp stuff did not sing to me, the Sleepwalker stuff just feels like filler, I'm not having the best time with it, I'm not... You know, I'm not, I don't want to lie to anyone, but even though I'm not having the best time with it, for some reason the main Infinity Wars line has been really fun, and this one's been really fun, and up to this, Gamora's had all the stones, she's folded the universe on itself and stuck it in the Soul Stone, and basically when the universe is destroyed, um, she's going to get to create her own universe and her own image and go from there. 
That's the plan, but, you know, plans even with people with godlike powers never quite work out, and this book is proof of that. So, um, I, I really think if you're following this Infinity Wars event, you need to pick up this book. Uh, if you're not following this Infinity Wars event, I would say that you could pick up, you could still have a good time with this book. Uh, I just noticed we're holding the variant. This is the Uncanny X-Men variant. This is not the, this is not the actual Infinity Wars number five cover. I'm sorry. Um, but... I think you could pick up the fifth book and still have a pretty good time with it. There's a lot of action. It's, it's a fun time. Um, if you're going to get into Infinity Wars, you haven't started yet, I would recommend doing the main Infinity Wars line, maybe picking up Soldier Supreme. I want to say Ghost Panther because it's such a cool concept, but it hasn't shown up yet in our store, so I don't know what to tell you guys about that. Um, uh, Iron Hammer was was all right for one issue, yeah, kind the of. The first one was all right. The first one was all right. The second one was not so good. Um... What, what what were the other ones? Sleepwalker was not that good, but I'm intrigued by the character. I want to know more about the character. I, I yeah, Soldier yes. Supreme. Sleepwalker is the weird character that came out of the '90s that I didn't remember, and I want to know more about the character. But uh, what they've given him has just been filler so far, so well, it's whatever. Um, Infinity Wars. If you're gonna get into it, go for the main line. Uh, next is I was super happy to see this. Really, really happy. Uh, Spider Geddon. And this is spider Geddon. This is the mainline one. This isn't just about uh, Otto's group, which I think is Ben Riley and... and uh, not Ben Riley, no, Kane. Yeah, Kane. Kane and... Um, I'm trying to remember who else. Kid Spider-Man and somebody else. All the guys who aren't afraid to do those justice. Yeah. <laughs> so the whole idea here is Otto put together his team being superior Spider-Man, and he wants a team that is not afraid of killing the Inheritors. The Inheritors are the big bad, again. It's, it's Spider-Verse Part 2, but it's a really, really good story, and it's fun right now. Um, so Otto is kind of gathering a new team, and the new team consists of those people from Vault of Spiders, uh, which I, I, I'm intrigued by them. One of the characters that they, they just showed a clip of in, in the Vault of Spiders, he had, like, spider eyes. Um, he's in this book, and I'm going to spoil it a little bit for you. So his name is Spider's Man, and he is a group of sentient hive mind spiders that are convinced they are Peter Parker. Oh, That's messed up. <laughs> I really, really like it. Um, so it's basically Otto's group doing their thing, and it's Miles Morales' group doing their thing, trying not to kill the Inheritors, trying to just neutralize the threat. Um, it's, it's a good, good, good friggin' read. I, I had a great time with this. If you haven't been reading spider Geddon, you need to get into this book. I, I would say even a DC fans, you, you can make that jump on this book and be perfectly happy. Uh, but, you know, just that, that's just my take for it. I, I really, really love the spider Geddon stuff. Uh, next is another book I was so happy to see this week, and that is Grant Morrison's Green Lantern. Uh, this, this book is, I mean, I liked it. They've been hyping it for a minute. Is it worth the hype? They've been hyping it. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, as a Green Lantern Corps fanboy, it's weird to say this. It's really surreal. Really surreal. It's, it's almost like a... I, I don't know, like, um, uh, God, who is that one writer that, that wrote the Mugwump stuff? It's like, it's like a weird, I guess, uh, dr psychedelic fiction fever dream, kind of. Um, it's, I, I don't know, it, it's sort of, it's weird what they, where they went with it. And the art itself, too, is kind of, uh, very psychedelic looking. I, I don't know if I can, if I can show you how wild it is at times really well it's just it's just sort of it, does, is it focused so I gotta move it over it's just sort of it's I mean it's it's kind of gritty art but really so I, I don't know how to explain it without spoiling too much of it basically before this it was just Green Lantern Space Cop they, they've always got like you know kind of really cool stories maybe some cool aliens even, even the core has weird aliens but they got super weird with them this time. Um, there, there was stuff that I've never seen them do before, uh, involving one of the corpsmen being a virus. <laughs> like, yeah, it was... A, I, I, I don't know if I should recommend it or not. As a Lantern Corps fanboy, I, I'm happy to see more Lantern Corps stuff. Um, the verdict's still out on this. I love Grant Morrison. I just I want to see more before I can fully recommend it. I didn't have a bad time. Uh, it's just a little weird. 
and I'm waiting to see where it goes. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't say much more without spoiling it, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, next is, oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, I have to think carefully before I speak on this one. So this is Batman. Batman number 58, The Penguin Has a Secret. Uh, I think if you, are, if you are even the slightest, tiniest hint of a Batman fan, you, you need to be reading this book. Like, this book was amazing. It was amazing, and, and also it, it felt like I was just on the, the verge of losing everything. And I think that's because uh, in this book, Batman is just on the verge of losing everything. If you don't know about what's going on, uh, let's, let's do a refresher. And this is going to spoil a little bit of Heroes in Crisis, a little bit of Nightwing last month, a little bit of Red Hood, um, a little bit of Detective Comics. But they, this, this is all stuff that's happened at least a month ago. So let's get into it. Um, so currently, uh, if, you, if you don't know, Batman's having a really rough year. Uh, let's see. His wedding was ruined, and that was instrumented by Bane, I guess. Uh, pulling the strings behind the scenes. Um, on top of that, Batman had broken Bane's back. So maybe there's, there's something further going on this. I'm not going to spoil too much. Um, so what else happened? Uh, the Bat family split. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Batman thinks Clayface died. I, I don't think they've resolved that yet. I could be mistaken. Um, they, uh, let's see, Red Hood got, Red Hood found out that his dad used to be a henchman for Penguin, and so he snapped and broke Batman's only rule of you can stay in Gotham if you don't kill anyone, and he tried to kill the Penguin. He shot him in the face. Didn't kill him. Uh, and, and if you can't tell, Penguin's got this this uh, one eye covered because he's wearing this sort of gnarly... I wouldn't say it's gnarly. It's a, it's an eye patch that looks like a monocle in the story. Um, but he didn't kill the Penguin, but he shot him in the face, so Batman uh, beat the crap out of him and threw him out of Gotham. Um, and then what else happened? Nightwing got shot in the head by KG Beast and lost all of who he was. So now he, he doesn't believe he's Dick Grayson, or he's, he's just not going to be Dick Grayson anymore. He's going to be Rick Grayson because... His TBI, he's lost too much of himself, so he's just going to be someone new, basically. Um, and that's all been really touching. But And then Heroes in Crisis, where they're still trying to figure out what happened, but there's a place called Sanctuary that is for heroes with PTSD. And pretty much uh, everybody there died. Almost everybody there died. Some, some people are left alive, and they're trying to piece together what happened. Uh, a garbage can going by. <laughs> um, but... Uh, so Batman's had a rough year, and and fallout from that Heroes in Crisis stuff is going to get even worse. And I can't even say it because it was an issue last week. But um, basically, he's losing everything. And I asked myself the question: um, Is is this someone breaking his spirit? And it could be. It could be. And I can't say much more than that. I had this discussion with Derek McCaw of Fanboy Planet, and uh, he's. Uh, well, Derek, I was right. <laughs> and, and I never get to say that to, to somebody like Derek McCaw because that man is a, is a comics encyclopedia. Actually, no, uh, Derek McCaw is, is damn good when it comes to comics. Rick Brechneider, uh blows my mind. That, that man might actually be a walking encyclopedia. And then there's Chuck Surface, who is also another walking... God, I, I know so many people that are so... Hi. Uh, so we had... Technical difficulties. It was like, I, I don't know what happened. The camera decided that we weren't, I was talking too much about my comic savvy friends. Um, <laughs> but we were, we were talking about this Batman book, which I think is a must read. Um, and I, I can't spoil too much, but it, it shows two characters that if you've been following King's Run, you kind of already suspected one character has been involved because he's sort of been a reoccurring theme. Um, but there's somebody else that's involved that they show a shot of on one panel. And, like, I literally... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We can't spoil it. I literally, like, jumped up and ran over to Yogi and was like, Oh, my God, is this who I think it is? And, like, we, we sort of confirmed with another customer that was, like, roaming through the store. That's our resident Spider-Man expert, Carl. Um, but we... Uh, yeah, there's somebody else in play that is really, really shocking. So... If you haven't been reading King's Run, you really, really need to read King's Run if you're a DC fan. If, if you're a Batman fan, I, I don't know what you're doing while you're missing this. I had a really good time with this book. Um, but it had me sort of... Because Batman's gone through so much, like, up until this point, that 
it had me on the edge of my seat. I thought that he was going to lose something else, and and it was, it it it, it, uh, it was, I was scared. I was scared. So good book, totally worth picking up. Um, if you're a Batman fan, if you're a DC fan, uh, if you're Marvel. Well, I don't know. You, you, if you like Batman, you could probably jump in. But if you're Marvel, probably not. Um, next is Death of the Inhumans. Been waiting to, for, for the end of this series. Been waiting to find out what happens. And if, if you can see it on the cover, Lockjaw's back. Lockjaw's not dead. Um, and or, or maybe he's going to die. I don't know. I shouldn't spoil anything. Um, but... Let's see what to talk about the Inhumans. How, how do we begin? So there was there was a prophecy that the Inhumans were going to destroy the Kree, and so the Kree were going to kill the Inhumans. Which the Inhumans are, I guess, part Kree. They were Kree experiments, basically, and so the Kree have basically been turning the other Inhumans into a war machine to use against the Inhumans, which is messed up. Um, and this is wrapping up this event, and I'm sad to see the see this event end. And I don't know if we're going to see more Inhumans. It, it feels like they're shelving them, like it, like we're saying goodbye. And I, I don't know. I, uh, I I'm not a giant Inhumans fan. I can't confess that I am, but I'm a huge Lockjaw fan. He's so cute, and he looks like my dog. And and, and so I want to see more Lockjaw, and I kind of want to see more Black Bolt. Uh, I could probably take the rest with a grain of salt. Maybe Medusa. I do like Medusa. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm sad. I, I think they're shelving the humans, and I don't think we're going to see them for at least a few years, maybe another decade. I hope I'm wrong. Um, but this, this book, you can't jump in on this book. Uh, if, if you haven't been reading the Death of the Inhumans event, I would say just wait for the trade and, and pick up the whole thing in the trade. Oh, good. <laughs> um so next we have Drowned Earth, the Justice League Drowned Earth. Uh, if you if you haven't heard any of our wrap ups until this point, this is Scott Snyder basically saying the floor is lava. Only in this event, the floor is not lava. The floor is some purple ocean water that or pu purple pink ocean water that will turn you into a weird like space merman creature. It's weird. It's weird. It's it's a strange event, but uh, I've been having a really really good time with it. It's 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 weird to say. It's almost like like a like I, I don't know what it is. It's very childlike and fun. I just hit the mic. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I've really loved about both these books and this event is that I don't know if you can pick it up, but the art, whatever they're doing with the ink. And the art in this book, it makes it look like like shiny, like there's almost like water droplets on each page, like really, really tiny ones. And it's super pretty. Uh, I, the artist is amazing. The storyline's really fun. Um, one of the things that they've done that, that, that made me laugh hysterically is they've got part of Starro in a jar that they're calling Jaro. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm having a really good time with this event. And uh, I don't know. I think Snyder struck gold with this event. I think that if you're a DC fanboy, you should totally be picking up these books. And it's not too late to jump in on this event. All you need to know is it's it's you can't you can't touch the floor. The floor is lava, uh, except the whole world is that that game. And the the Justice League is sort of trying to survive and navigate the uh, event. Um, next, we have Ask Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, as as guardians, I, I totally pronounced that wrong. As guardians um, of the galaxy, and you can see from the cover, it says uh, the the undead god of thunder. So there is some stuff going on in here. I hadn't been following this tie-in. I probably should have been. Um, it's basically let's see, Nebula is is dropping a bunch of gods uh, onto planets oh. that she doesn't like and destroying them or I think I don't think she's doing it because she doesn't like them I think she's doing it to show like be a show of force towards Gamora is, is how it's explained and the Asgardians are in space Asgardians are in space I'm gonna pronounce that wrong endlessly uh, uh, one of them is what was the executioner's name again Scorn Scorn is that was that his name the guy with the two guns in the movie oh, uh, <laughs> I can't remember Scourge, thank you. Scourge is in it. Um, 
I, I don't really know these characters too well. I, I probably should, and I haven't been following this comic. But r- jumping in on this, I had a really good time. I, I was shocked. Um, maybe it's because I, I still remember Nebula Unleashed, but I, I like seeing Nebula being brutal. It's kind of fun. And, and you get that in this book. So this, this book, if you're a Marvel fan, I think you could have a good time jumping in on this event at this book. Uh, it's not terribly confusing. Uh, there, there's a couple of times where they go back into Scourge's backstory that's a little like, whoa, what's going on? But I navigated it just fine, and I had a good time with that book. Um, next book. Uh, this is one that, that I was forced to read at gunpoint. Uh, Yogi held a gun to my head. No. Um, so I have, I'm going to fully confess, and you guys can decide if you want to take my, my uh, geek license away, but I have never watched, well, I've watched one. I've never mo- watched more than one Doctor Who episode in my entire life. Ooh. Never. Um, I have no idea what Doctor Who is about, really, uh, other than I saw an episode where they were doing Are You My Mother, and it was pretty creepy. Um, so this is the 13th Doctor, and this is where the the big uproar about the 13th Doctor, uh, uh, I, which which is, I don't know, people being toxic, I guess. Yeah. Uh, dude, if anyone knows anything about the Doctor, the Doctor's human form, or I guess... Time Lord form, if you really want to talk about it. Yeah. It's been usually human. They've alluded to the doctor at one point possibly being a woman as a child. Oh. But yeah. Some people just can't handle change. Oh, okay. Okay. Yogi's take is some people just can't handle change. Um, I have no idea because I, I don't know the doctor. Uh, I, I really like this character. I, I liked her as a character. Uh, I don't know anything about Doctor Who. Um, basically, there's a problem with something in time, and they're trying to navigate it, and they jump in their TARDIS, and they go out, and she's got a... Uh, what's that thing? She points at things? Oh, I'm talking about the screwdriver. Oh, the screwdriver. oh that's a screwdriver, yeah, is a it? Screwdriver, it yeah. looks like a magic, like a fat magic wand. You can also put uh, cameras together. Okay. Okay, it's a sonic screwdriver. Um, she she did that. They threw a D twenty in one of the one of the shots inside the TARDIS, and I was like, oh, that's a D twenty. Uh, so I I don't know. I had a really good time with this book. I laughed out loud a couple times. Um, I I didn't know what was going on. It's it's uh, the storyline accelerated. Uh, it, it wasn't boring. Um, and I don't know how much more I can say without spoiling this, but uh, I, I, it's a good book. And we have several upon several upon several um, uh, variants. Covers. Yeah, we ordered like, I don't know, I think like 13 variant covers. I think they did that on purpose. Um, and I, I got to add this too. When it comes to the Doctor, there's always nerd rage about who's going to be the next Doctor. There's always just like, oh, we hate the new Doctor. We want the old Doctor back. Then everyone's like, oh, okay, well, the, old, the new Doctor's not so bad. And then before you know it, everyone's like, oh, I love the new Doctor. Then immediately following, everyone's like, no, I don't want the new Doctor to go. Screw this new guy. Then the new guy comes in and same thing. It's a vicious cycle. Vicious cycle. Okay. Yeah. So that's the cycle of uh, rage involving Doctor Who. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't know that. I Now I'm kind of nervous about reading further. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I had a good time. I'm going to read the next issue. I'm going to read the next issue. Maybe uh, I, I don't know that I'll go watch the show just yet, but I'm going to read the next issue. Um, next we had Sparrowhawk. I d- think I read the first book. I don't know. I have brain damage, and I might have forgotten it, but I think I read the first book. Um, but basically, Sparrowhawk is, is a... It's sort of a modern... I wouldn't say it's a modern retelling of Alice in Wonderland. It's a... It's an Alice in Wonderland inspired story. Uh, the girl in it, uh, Sparrowhawk, sheds her skin and becomes a fairy. And that's where this, this book too begins. And she's sort of navigating uh, this new land. And she's got somebody coaching her who may or may not be good for her. And she's basically trying to get back to her world without succumbing to this world and becoming full-blown evil. Uh, I, I had a really good time with it. I had, a, I had a good time with this book. It's very surreal. It's like something out of a dream, which I guess, you know, if you're talking about Alice in Wonderland and Lewis Carroll, that's pretty much spot on. So they did a good job with this book. More importantly, the art is outstanding. Um, there are times where it looks sort of uh, bubblegummy, and there are times where it looks really gritty, and I, I think it's very appropriate with how the scenes shift and the colors shift and, 
and uh, yeah, so I had a good time with it. This is Boom Studios. This is a Boom Studios book. So I'm looking forward to the next issue. So I, I'd say go out and read this if you are remotely interested in stuff like that. Um, next is something I was super happy to see, and that is the Sideways Annual. And I know we've got, we've got some regulars that really, really love Sideways, and I wish DC would step it up and do a little bit more with them. At least get me a hat. Uh, <laughs> um, but so Sideways, if you haven't been following this, Basically, he uh, uses his rift to meet up with the seven soldiers, I think they're called. Uh, Zatanna is one of them, Frankenstein's another, and I can't remember the rest. Um, but they have to go to the negative mul part of the multiverse, uh, the, the dark part of the multiverse, I think it's called, yeah. from Dark Knight's Metal. The, 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 the place where worlds are always falling apart. And they wind up in an area where um, it's sort of in between universes and somehow it's stable. But there's an evil guy that is sort of sucking, not sort of, is legitimately sucking the life force of all these other people he's rescued, which, which, they're weird. They're weird. There's, like, Jimmy Olsen that's a werewolf. There's, like, Lois Lane that's, like, on some kind of creature attached to a giant brain. There's a guy named Kent Clark. It, it's weird. It's, it's totally like something out of a dream. Again, like something out of a dream. Um, but he winds up finding a Superman there. A Superman that looks looks uh, not not eerily like like New 52. He looks just like New 52, but he's from the Dark Multiverse. So I can't spoil it more than that. It just picks up where the last Sideways book, book uh, took off. Um, basically, Sideways got his Rift powers back so he can uh, teleport time and space. And meanwhile, he's found a Superman, he's found a new ally, and he's got to figure out how to escape that, that weird place in between. And he does. And those characters, those weird monstrosity characters, like they, they, uh, they're in the story too. And I'm kind of wondering if DC's going to do more with them. Uh, I don't know how I feel about them. They're very strange looking, but I, I really felt bad for them. Yeah, Lois Lane is like this huge, massive brain. She's like a brain, yeah. yeah. Um, so I kind of want to know more about those characters, but uh, they also are, are really monstrous. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, yeah, but that Sideways Annual is totally a good read if you're a Sideways fan. If you're a DC fan or you, you're trying to jump into Sideways, don't jump in on that book. That, that would be very confusing. I would say go back, like, two or three books. Um, next is Crowded, and I, I, I pretty much picked up Crowded because I like the concept. I don't know if I like the execution. Um, it's an Image Comics book. It's... Sorry, got a little bit of indigestion. It's... Basically, how do I word this? It's crowdsourcing and assassination. So it's like people are watching social media. They're throwing money at, at uh, seeing someone get assassinated, and the money keeps going up. Meanwhile, other people are trying to do it, and those people are being arrested or killed or you know whatever else. And, and meanwhile, more and more people are betting on it. Uh, some of these people have made it into like their career where they they've got sponsorship, and it's. That sounds like sliders. Sounds like Sliders or like Running Man. Oh yeah, Running Man. It sounds like Running Man. Yeah. It's like a modern version of Running Man, I'd say. Uh, I gotta stop drumming things because I'm sure this new micro new fancy microphone is picking it all up. Um, so it's it's a weird book. It's it's a weird book. I kind of think I should have jumped in like uh, maybe a couple issues back. Uh, this is the first time I'd read it. Didn't have the best time with it, but it doesn't mean it's not a good book. I just think I I probably should have started sooner. I love the concept. But, I, I mean, I was a huge Running Man fan back in the day. Who loves you and who do you love? Yeah. I, I, man, I, I must have watched that movie a hundred, a hundred times at least. And then, and then I worked at a place called Qzar, which was like a laser gun oh, place. I love and, and even with my brain damage, I can still remember that the song that they started just about every match with <laughs> was from the, like it was an Electronica song, but it started out with that guy yelling that from the Running Man. And and for some reason that's the memory that sticks with me. Qzar was different, Mike, but yeah, that's yeah. dope, man. It was the San Jose Qzar. Uh, okay, next is Outer Darkness by Image. Uh, I read another book by Image that was in space. Um, Image, if you don't know, uh, I don't know how many people know this, but if you want superheroes, you go to DC Marvel or sometimes Valiant. Valiant's got its own universe of superheroes like Ninjak and uh, what's that other. The one I read recently that I really, really liked, Shadow Man. Um, so uh, Image 
tends to I mean they'll do some but they tend to stray from superhero stuff they, they will tell everything from like slice of life stories they will tell sci-fi stories supernatural stories um, but I, I kind of fall in love with a lot of their books and I don't know if I'm gonna do it with this book but I'll touch on it in a minute but uh, that other book the infinite dark it like takes place in space and like mankind is at the last space station that they built to survive like it, after the rest of the universe has pretty much died came, I don't know imploded on itself mm -hmm. um, so I had a really good time with this book I was super looking forward to this because I was like yes image space books dope uh, I, I don't know what to take out of it it's weird it's super weird uh, let's talk about it um, so this one sort of sets the stage, so let's talk about it. It's it's basically space crossed with supernatural. That's Star Trek crossed with supernatural. Um, so the the book opens and they're trying to like survive a necrostorm, which apparently involves like demonic possession in space. And and it's it is like legit like what was that movie with uh, Linda Blair? No, Exorcist. Like legit people throwing up and turning green type exorcism type stuff. Um, and the people that are, that are in space are not necessarily scientists. Like they're using magic. And I think that they, they touch on this in the book, but the what powers their different spaceships. They said one, one ship had a, a hate engine and they were like, no, we upgraded it now. We have a god engine. And they trapped like a Sumerian god inside the engine and, and legit like had to sacrifice people to, to, to uh, get the engine to power. And I'm probably saying too much of the book, uh, but it's basically, they, they don't use science per se. Maybe it's a bastardization of science and magic. So I like that concept. I really like that concept. I've even... I've even worked on a book with with that sort of concept before, but I it's it's strange to see it in science fiction form. I want to see more before I can tell you if it, if it's good or not. Uh, I would say this book is it's it's a good read if you like image. It's a good read if you like sci-fi. Uh, it's a good read if you like supernatural stuff. Uh, it's just kind of weird. I I need to see more. I need to see more, and I think you if you're gonna pick up this book. Plan on picking up uh, at least one more, one or two more issues after before you make a judgment call. Uh, the art is cool. Okay, uh, so um, God, you know, I I hate the mall music. We we it, it seems like every every other song is that suddenly I see de -de -de, de -de 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 -de. I hate that song. If I never hear that song again, it'll be too soon. Um, anyway, so, uh, okay, we, we had some terrible technical difficulties. I, I, I don't know what's happening with our memory card. I think we need a bigger memory card. So this is going to be the funniest first upload to YouTube ever because we've had so many problems. Um, we were talking about Outer Darkness, an image book, image skybound book. Uh, you can tell that there's a lot of love in this book. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really fully sold on the art just yet. Um. But they do cool stuff like destination accepted and and uh, you know uh, authorization code required on the back. It's it's there's, there's a lot of love in this book, and I want to see more. I want to see more before I, I pass judgment on it. Uh, for a first book, I don't think it was the strongest showing, but the next couple of books might pull it uh, pull its head out uh, up higher over head head above water. I I don't know what weird. <laughs> weird term I was looking for there, but uh, we'll see. Uh, the last book I want to talk about has been something that I really, really love talking about right now, and that's Nightwing. And if you haven't been following Nightwing, we're going to wrap it back up for you. He's had a traumatic brain injury, been, been shot in the head by KG Beast, and he's lost almost all of who he was, which is what I went through with my traumatic brain injury. I lost a lot of my short term. I lost a lot of uh, cognitive skills at the time. Uh, not a lot. I actually, for brain damage, uh, it, it was it was they they would call it a mild traumatic brain injury, and they measure it based on how long you've been knocked out. Um, but uh, and then wound up losing a lot of long term stuff, and didn't realize that I I lost it until further down the road. Um, but so the the way they're writing him right now, Grayson uh, Nightwing, um, is is really touching and I really love it and I get really excited whenever a new Nightwing comes in because of this so right now he's he's cast off Dick Grayson he's no longer Dick Grayson he's sort of accepted that he's not gonna be the same person he was but he's still you know 
some of it is still a part of him. The muscle memory of being a superhero is still a part of him. Now he's Rick Grayson, and uh, Bloodhaven's not happy with that. He he basically went and burnt down his old his old uh, uh, hideout with all his costumes, and some folks, well, one folk from the police department found it, and he's donned the costume, and now more people have donned the costumes. So you can see from the cover, there's more of them, and it says, Enter the Nightwings, and it shows a very angry Rick Grayson on top of a cab. So I'm... I'm of the assumption this is building towards a fight where either he will take back his old identity or he will come to terms with the new people parading around as him. But I don't think he's... I, 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 I think that, that a fight is coming. I don't think he's going to let this stand without a bruising knuckles, I guess you could say. But I, I, I'm having a good time with... God, I'm having a good time with the series. I don't want to spoil much more than that, but I probably already spoiled too much. Uh, <laughs> so this, if you're a DC fan... If you're a Nightwing fan, if you're a Batman fan, Bat Family fan, if you're even on the fence about liking that stuff, uh, this book is great. What was all that noise in the mall? Did you hear that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like some cutlery or something down the way. Yeah, I don't know. We had a shoplifter run through the other day, and, and me and Yogi looked at each other and were like, oh, it's happening. We went running, and, and I almost plowed over one of the, the Shoe Palace guys when I came flying out the, uh, the front of our store. And we ran him down, and... and uh, we, we didn't run him down. We actually ran out the doors, and he threw both his bags and threw his backpack, and uh, and then just took off. And it was just the funniest, funniest damn thing to see. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was our week in a nutshell. Um, let's see. We have a couple more things to announce really fast. Uh, our, our online store has blossomed. We've put so much stuff on our online store. I think we've got. <coughs> Two thirds, two thirds of all our trade paperbacks are in the online store. We're trying to get the rest of our merch on there too, but I think the goal right now is trade paperbacks. Um, we should be finished within a, maybe a week, week and a half of putting all the trade paperbacks on there. But there's a lot, there's a ton of stuff in the online store, so go check it out. We fixed shipping, so shipping should be set up right, so it should give you options and tell you what you need for your shipment. Um, and if you have any questions, let us know. And please, please, please come and see us. We have an event coming up uh, for Veterans Day. We're going to have, what, it, what is it? We're going to have a recruiting station in here. So we're going to have Army guys. Uh, Ar Army guys. That's not how I talk. I sound like such a civilian. <laughs> like I wasn't a paratrooper at one point. We're going to have soldiers in here. And uh, they're going to bring some goodies. They haven't told us what that is. It might, for all I know, it might be, you know, a pull-up bar. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think we're going to do the event here on Monday, though, when everyone's got the day off. You're going to do it here on Monday on Veterans Day. So come on through. Celebrate Veterans Day with us, with, with a couple of veterans, um, and buy some comics. We'll give you a – are we working on a discount for that we're, day? We're working on a discount. We haven't nailed it down. We haven't decided, but there will be a discount that day. Um, maybe – Maybe if you could beat one of us in push-ups, we'll give you a, a slightly bigger discount. Uh, maybe. <laughs> that sounds like a fun challenge. I haven't done push-ups in a while, but I'll, I'll knock some out. Why not? Um, uh, so I guess that's our video for this week. And we have no idea. We have nice, new, shiny equipment, so hopefully it sounds better and looks a little better. Uh, it, it's very, very definitely not going to be cut better because we had all types of problems, but we're going to do our best. Uh, Yogi has been practicing video editing, so maybe I'm underselling it here. He uh -huh. he might master some crap. Uh, <laughs> you're might. the you're the master might. you're the master of crap now. Yes. <laughs> I've done a lot of crap in my day. The crap master. <laughs> I don't know what we're saying anymore. Uh, so have a good week. It's a good week for comics. Uh, come out and see us, and we'll see you next week. You want to do like a dance or something? Like a dance? You want me to do a dance? I don't know what kind of dance you want me to do.